In this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Squire Classic Vibe 34 inch scale limited edition Jaguar bass. Hey guys, I'm Tyler, thank you for tuning back into the channel once again. So I'm going to be giving you a full demo and review um, of this, which is the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar bass in its 34 inch scale length limited edition incarnation. So probably the longest named Squire bass out of their range. Um, but it's very similar to the 32 inch scale Jaguar bass that I reviewed a few weeks ago now. So what I'm going to do is in places I'm going to link you back to that review. I will um, pop that review in the cards above me so that will pop up when I mention specs that are similar to that review and you can go and check out that review and also get an idea of how the tone might vary between the 32 inch scale version and this 34 inch scale version. If this video is helpful to you don't forget to hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button if you like what I do. This video is once again in collaboration with Guitar Centre Langley here in the UK, hence the t-shirt. So if you want to check out this very bass you can do. The store is now back open again so you can go and check it out there or just click the link in the description, I'll leave a link to this base and also to the website in general so you can check out the whole range of stock there and uh, if you want to get your hands on this base, you can. So I'm going to run you through the specs and I'm going to run you through tones on its own and just give you a few kind of thoughts about the electronics package in this base and then do a head to head comparison back to back so you can hear the different tones you can get from this base with the different range of settings. As I said earlier, I'm going to just link you to the Jaguar base 32 inch scale version review in a lot of places so I'm gonna make this one nice and short if I can. So here goes. We have a NATO body again I described that in the other video. Same bridge we've got Alnico pickups, P pickup in the front, Jazz pickup in the back. We have the stacked Jazz style electronics so we have a tone on the bottom and volume on the top for each pickup. You have an Indian laurel fretboard replacing what would typically be rosewood. You have a maple neck a 4 bolt neck construction, the usual Squire bone nut and tuners that aren't really very fluted at all actually, um, a little bit less fluted than some of the Squire bases that I've been mentioning recently. Aesthetically this has block inlays which are always cool, I love a block inlay and this simple black finish. The neck is finished with a gloss finish and so is the body. In terms of the dimensions of the base as I've already mentioned, the biggest thing about this is that it's a 34 inch scale. So it's a traditional long scale Fender style bass. So the tone is going to have a little bit more of that 34 inch scale character, which to me has a bit more of a defined mid range, the ability to be strung heavier or drop tune a little bit and still retain definition to your notes. And it's just going to give you that classic Fender tone, really. The nut is a one and a half inch nut, so jazz bass style, jazz bass width nut. And the neck is really slim. Coming down from the bottom of the neck, it doesn't particularly fatten out at all, just remains slim and just widens out as you come up the fretboard. Overall, I think the neck is really comfortable. I think I can see it appealing to a lot of players, and I immediately found myself pretty comfortable. For my preference, I do generally prefer a bigger neck, but I think it's hard to go wrong with a slim neck on a bass that's designed for such a wide range of players. You just can't go wrong with a slim neck, really. In terms of weight, this particular bass is right around the 4 kilogram category. In terms of construction, this particular model I have in my hands is pretty well done. There's very little to complain about. The only thing that I might say is that this jazz pickup was a little bit low, so what I've done is just come to the screws on the right hand side and just loosen them a little bit to allow the pickup to sit a bit more flat, if not slightly favouring the treble side, just to make sure that when I'm playing across the range from the E string up to the G, that it remains roughly the same volume. Overall with any Squire bass I think you can definitely benefit from a setup. So that was a quick run through the specs. If you want to get more information on the specs they're pretty much the same as the 32 inch model so the link to that will be above me and also in the description. So what I'm going to do now is plug this in and just go through a little bit of the electronics and how they differ to most other bases and just go into a little bit more depth than I did in the 32 inch scale Jaguar review on some of the things you can do with the electronics. Now one thing that's more apparent to me on this bass than it was on the 32 inch Jaguar is that I think because of the mid range that you get and the definition you get from the slightly longer scale I think that it's more apparent to me um, about the loading of the electronics 
in this base. What I mean by that is that when you have a fender base with two stacked knobs, two tone controls, and it's a passive circuit, it means that they both have an effect on each other no matter what you do. So effectively the circuit has more of a load on it, I believe. I think that's the right terminology. Someone will no doubt in the comments correct me. But I think broadly that's why this happens. And for me, what I noticed with this bass in particular, more than the 32 inch scale, is that with both tones all the way up and both volumes all the way up, the tone is just a little bit darker than you'd find on a normal Fender bass with one tone control. What I then also find is that if I turn the volume down of one entirely, so it kind of removes it from the circuit, not fully, but it, it's, you know, it's not really present and active as much, you gain a lot more of that treble back. So overall, I think it has a slightly different tone than you'd expect on most traditional style Fender basses, and I think it goes a long way. But what I'd say is it's kind of the equivalent to having a volume up full on a P bass and then taking the tone back, say, to three quarters. Your flat tone is kind of there. And then if you want to have that full range, a little bit more treble again, you just have to turn one pickup all the way off to regain that kind of sound. So I'm just going to demo that to you right now. So this is the sound with the volumes both on full and the tones all the way up. Now I'm going to turn the volume off on the back pickup and leave the tone all the way up on the front. I think it's quite clear that's a lot brighter. Now I'm just going to give you an idea of the rear pickup with the tone on full and the volume all the way up from pickup turned off. This is both pickups with the tone rolled all the way off. So that's just a couple of the things that I really noticed about this bass that made a difference. But you can check out more of my explanation on the fun things you can do with these two controls in the 32 inch scale review. At this point I'm going to go straight to the tone demo with the back to back examples. Let me know what your favourite tone is in the comments below. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Now you've seen the tone demo and hopefully you've left your favourite setting in the comments below if you haven't do that right now and now I just want to go through and give you my conclusions and kind of let you know who I think this bass is best suited to. Overall I think this bass is a nice and slightly different addition to the Squire range. I think no doubt in my mind that the PJ setup is just great for a fingerstyle player I think particularly with this stacked knob setup on the electronics with that little bit of top end being removed I find that it just really thickens up the tone a little and if you're playing fingerstyle I think it's a great place to start. The other thing I love about these Jaguar basses 
and these electronics is just the variety you can get. In the other review I went through extensively on how you can blend different amounts of volume on each pickup and different tones on each pickup to get a wider range of tones and that remains the same on this bass. I think there's a really wide range of versatility that is there to be enjoyed. I can't demo all of that in this video or even in the other video but trust me it's there and I do this a lot with my Warwick Starbase where I'll run say the front pickup tone all the way off and the rear pickup tone all the way on so you get that dark warmth of the front pickup combined with the cut and definition of the rear pickup and then also changing the volume and how much of each is in there has a great effect on the tone too. For many I imagine the biggest question is why should I buy the 34 inch scale version versus the 32 inch scale version and that's a question that I've been asking myself too. I think if you haven't you should definitely try out the 32 inch scale Jaguar. There's something very cool and fun about that slightly shorter scale it doesn't feel significantly shorter, but it feels shorter enough that it's comfortable. The tones are similar to your classic Fender enough that you don't really think about it that much. But then when you record it or hear it back, it's just that little bit fatter, and I really enjoyed that. With the 34 inch scale, it's much more suited to someone who's used to the 34 inch scale, someone who really likes that tone, and also someone who might say want to drop tune or just wants that classic bass feel and experience. The other thing that the 34 inch scale has over the 32 is that extra little bit of cut and definition in the mid range, as well as the low end being a little bit tighter and more defined. So if that's something you're into or you play a very heavy style of music, I think this bass, particularly in this colorway, is gonna be a cool option. The one thing I would say about this bass and the electronics is that because of their stacking and the load it puts on the electronics, it does sound darker. I found that slap style in particular didn't really speak or excite me that much um, because you don't have that treble range until you switch to one pickup and at the same time I don't think either of those pickups is particularly well suited to slap based on their location. The P pickup on its own, I quite like the P pickup tone if you've ever heard Forget Me Nots by Patrice Russian, that's a P bass slapped tone all the way up and I think it's really cool. But often, I, I mean, I've tried it in the studio um, with the P bass and the tone all the way up, and the engineers and everyone, they just want that jazz bass sound. That's the classic slap tone. So, in that way, I don't think this bass suits it. And again, the fact that the rear pickup, you can get that jazz bass tone, but it's just not in the right place for slap. That jazz bass sound of both pickups on, tone all the way up, is the slap sound. And really, you can't get that out of this bass. Overall, I think this bass is very easy to recommend if you're a fingerstyle player or a pickstyle player. There's a wide range of tones in there. You don't need it to be ridiculously bright, and you have the choice of each pickup. You can get great P-bass tones out of this. They sound really thick, and you can get good fingerstyle tones out of the back pickup as well. So, for versatility as a fingerstyle player, I think it's really hard to go wrong with this bass. I also think if you are a player that wants a slimmer neck bass that's pretty ergonomic and fairly comfortable, and just something a little bit different to a jazz bass, it's another great choice. And if you want the best of both worlds in terms of a jazz and a P in one bass, this is kind of the best thing you can do in the square range. On the other hand, I just wouldn't recommend this bass for slap players, so if that's your thing, I'd maybe steer towards a jazz bass. That's just the classic tone, and I just don't feel like this bass really nails that tone. Ultimately, I think this is a super solid bass, and between the 32 and the 34 inch scale is really going to be a personal preference. I personally would probably go with the 32, just because it's something a little bit different and would add to my arsenal. I already have a full scale P bass you can see behind me, I've already got full scale jazz basses and star basses, in fact every bass in my collection is 34 or 35 inch scale. But I would sit down if you can, find a store with both of these, 32 and 34, and just play them. Maybe if you only want one bass for everything and classic tones, maybe this is the bass to go for, P bass pickup, jazz bass pickup and a wide range of versatility from what is essentially simple electronics it's quite hard to go wrong. I think over these last few weeks of playing Jaguar basses with the PJ setup it's really kind of taken a place in my heart and I think it has a great place in the Squire range. So that is my full review and demo of the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar bass 34 limited edition. Let me know what your thoughts are on this bass in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and also consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. All my reviews are done in this style. So if you liked what I do, hit those buttons and 
keep up to date with the latest of my videos. My Instagram should be below, so don't forget to head over there and check that out and just keep up to date with what I do week to week and um, the different bases that I come across in what I do. Don't forget to head to the links in the description if you liked what you saw in this video and want to buy this very base, you can. There'll be a link to this base itself and the Guitar Center UK website in general. And uh, don't forget you can also okay. get into store now. They are reopened again. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you around soon.